you very much. Noel Edmonds, the face of BBC Saturday Night Television for decades, and then Deal or No Deal on Channel 4, says he was almost left bankrupt after falling victim to a multi-million pound fraud at HBOS. He's seeking £60 million in compensation over losses he claims he suffered when his former business, Unique Group, collapsed. The £245 million loan scandal at Halifax Bank of Scotland, which was later bought by Lloyds, saw several men jailed for their part in the scandal, with the bankers being described as the British Wolves of Wall Street. Lloyds have previously disputed Noel Edmonds' claim that the fraud caused his business to collapse. Now, in an exclusive interview, Noel Edmonds tells us he was left suicidal and at rock bottom after the losses, and he's here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm very good, and it's a great pleasure to meet you. Um, how have you worked out that it's 60 million that you need back from them? Because it's such an awful lot of money. It's a huge amount of money. It was independently assessed by a highly respected accountancy firm called Menzies, who are experts in forensic accountancy. There were stories in the press, it was 300 million, etc. The figure has been assessed at about 60 million. Mm. The businesses that were destroyed would have been worth that amount of money. And how did it collapse? Actually, I am one of many, many victims in this country. Uh, I find myself as a reluctant people's champion. I mean, this started a year ago when uh, the people went to prison and I realised that one of those people was my bank manager. And uh, I previously thought, oh, I must have been rubbish at business. Um, but then it all became very clear and this is a common thing with the victims. And suddenly a light goes on where you go, oh, actually, my farm was taken away for this reason. I lost my garage for this reason. And we are talking about thousands of people, mm. maybe tens of thousands of people, not the 60-odd that Lloyd's Banking Group claim. And um, basically, uh, SMEs were targeted uh, for their assets. Uh, and OK, the people that went to prison took that policy to extremes. But unfortunately, it is a policy that has been prevalent throughout British banking for many, many years. It does go back to the 90s. And banks saw a way of boosting their balance sheet by acquiring the assets of businesses. And in my case, Unique Group has some great assets. And uh, we were not able to realise the value of those assets, which meant that um, basically we were forced into administration and the bank came after me for money under my personal guarantees, which forced me right to the edge of bankruptcy. And had a huge impact on you personally. Tell, us, tell our audience a little about that. Well, ma massive impact. Um, it was an incredibly stressful time, and that is a real understatement, Victoria, because I am either by nature or nurture a very positive person. But last year I decided I might be able to benefit other people if I said, yes, I tried to take my life. Um, uh, the reaction to that has been um, humbling. And um, I was delighted with the reaction of the Samaritans, who I've supported for many years. And I'm very pleased to say there are individuals who I am now still regularly in contact with, mm. who attribute the fact they didn't take their lives to the fact that they heard the bloke off the telly had been driven into that dark space. Please never be judgmental about someone who attempts to take their life, because until you've been in that space, you mm. can't know how bad it is. And can I just add, we have an epidemic of suicide in this country. Mm. And uh, it's, particularly it's, pr it's particularly men mm. um, who, who always want to be seen to be strong, to be providing for their family. And suddenly you're exposed as fallible to yourself and it takes you to a very dark place. Mm. And what about the impact on those around you, those close to you? Well, it, it was a huge, I mean, it was devastating for my family. Mm. Um, in all of this, with the failure of Unique Group, it's easy to forget. I don't forget that um, over 70 people um, lost their jobs. They had to be told that they were going to be made redundant. That impacts um, to, to many other people in their social circles and in their family. It was a horrendous period in my life. And as I say, at the time, in the early 2000s, I just thought that, I was rubbish at business. My chief executive thought the same thing. And then suddenly we realised that we are part of a cold, calculating plan to destroy the business. And that's why I'm taking legal action against Lloyd's Banking Group, because I've tried to negotiate with them. 
But as with so many of the other victims, they say one thing in public, but in private, they have a different agenda. Well, they said they, they, they've, they've tried mediation and offered you some compensation, but it's not enough. Well, apparently. they have this thing called the Independent Griggs Review, which can't be independent because they pay Professor Griggs, and he's not a real professor, and he doesn't have any qualifications in this area at all. And you're put in. I don't that. know if that's true about his qualifications, <coughs> by the way, so I just need well, to say that. OK. But well, let's not go there. I'm talking about the mediation right, but, and what but, the offer but is. is. But you say it wasn't uh, enough. Uh, well... They put me into the Griggs Review, which isn't an independent review. And Again, which I don't know if he's independent or not, so I'm just saying Well, that. they describe it as an independent review. Okay. Um, it's not transparent. Um, people have to sign gagging orders. Contrary to what their chairman said at the AGM last May, no one is compensated for their losses. They give money for distress. And, of course, the people who are victims have to be honest and they have to say... Um, their circumstances as part of filling out this form mm. for the review. So Lloyds know that people are on tough times and so they're able to offer them the minimum amount of money. So they forced me into the review. We filed a 90-page statement of uh, the losses and they immediately threw me out of the review and said, oh, we'll go to mediation. Mm. Well, I went to mediation with an astonishingly well-qualified chap, Lawrence Kirshen, a wonderful man, um, and I went to negotiate and to settle. They didn't come for that. And but what then, a, they, 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 it wasn't <coughs> enough, that's, that's the bottom line. Well, what, what well they started off with an insulting amount of money. They didn't even offer to give me back the money that they talked through, a, a corrupt high court action. They offered me, in the end, after 10 hours, £3.6 million, which, I grant you, is a massive amount of money. Who mm. wouldn't want that in their bank account? Mm. But set it in the context of £60 million, I have stolen from you £600, you're upset, and I offer you £36 back. And they wouldn't admit that actually a crime had been committed. They wouldn't admit I was a victim. And they forced me into a situation where, in two weeks, we issue proceedings. OK. Um, professor, the professor that you mentioned uh, says he is independent. I'm just going to say that. Let's move on from that. Well, he can't be because well, hang he's on, paid don't by Lloyd. Don't keep saying the same thing. He says he no, is. Right. How can Les he be independent if he's paid by Lloyd? I'm just telling you what he says. Yeah, okay. Leslie says this. Go for it, Noel. You're representing so many people who've lost everything. Their homes, businesses, and in some cases, their lives. Well, look, I have been humbled by the reactions. It is no exaggeration, Victoria. I open my emails in the morning and without fail, every day I'm getting a story, not just about Lloyds, mm. to be fair to Lloyds Banking Group, this goes through our whole financial sector, but people who have lost everything and they don't have the litigation funding mm. that I have secured. It was a massive moment for me when Ethereum, one of the biggest funders in the world, said, we've looked at your case and on merit we will fund it. Mm. <coughs> um, I've seen some estimates that you're worth £75 million. Is that true? No. What are you worth, do you think? I have no idea at the moment. Very, very little. Because okay. until Ethereum came along, I was funding all this myself. I'm determined to win this. And if the one legacy that Noel Edmonds achieves is that other people get justice, then I will be satisfied. You said you are a positive person. Mm-hmm. And... How, how, how does the posi positive side of your nature fit in with this battle against Lloyds? Well, the moment I realised that I was the victim of criminals, then I was able to put a positive spin on it. And uh, I do have the facts now. Mm. Uh, I've done a lot of work with people like Lord Cromwell, Vince Cable, the APPG on this. Unfortunately, I do know an awful lot now about the way that banks operate and I agree with the comments of the MPs in January at the APPG debate that there is systemic criminality and malpractice within British banks, principally RBS and Lloyds. Okay. And it, it, it's, it's really upsetting to realise this is a massive national scandal that has affected everyone in the country. We've had 10 years of austerity because of a relatively small number of corrupt bankers. OK. Uh, there's no evidence of systemic criminality. I'm going to read this statement from Lloyds as well, if I may. It made determined efforts, they say, to reach a consensual resolution with Noel Edmonds through mediation last year, but this was not possible. 
As a formal litigation process is now anticipated, it will be inappropriate to comment other than to say his claim will be contested. They would say that. You... It's the Mandy Rice Davis comment. I know. You were diagnosed with prostate cancer. In 2013. And you believe, I think, that part of the stress of the business collapsing contributed to that? Yes, it is a scientific fact, medical fact, that stress can uh, contribute to a wide range of diseases. Mm -hmm. um, we have a health epidemic in the UK. Is that anything to do with the very stressful way in which most people live their lives? The scientists say, Yes, it manifests itself in different ways, but undoubtedly for me, when I got that diagnosis, I looked back and thought, right, I know how this has come about. And I was determined from that awful moment where I had to tell Liz, yes, I have cancer. That's your wife. Yes, I was determined that I would come at it with a smile on my face, uh, befriend my tumour, I put it even on my screensaver, and I wouldn't talk about attacking cancer. I wouldn't talk about a war, I would just ask it to leave and um, actually Mark Emberton who was my consultant who gave me the high food treatment that thankfully worked and destroyed the tumour, he said he'd never met such uh, a positive person. He kept looking at my medical records saying, I keep getting your date of birth wrong here, are you really? Well I'm 70 in December, he, he couldn't believe it. And I do believe there's a direct link between uh, your positive attitude to all sorts of things, whether it's Lloyds Banking Group or cancer, and the outcome. What did you, what kind of things would you say to your cancer or a photograph of your tumour? What would you say? Well, I called it my little friend and um, I would ask it to go away. I would In polite terms or did you swear? No, 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 no. You have to befriend it. Oh, OK. And uh, I changed uh, certain aspects of my diet. I am a huge uh, advocate of pulsed electromagnetism, which I think has a role to play in a range of illnesses and mm. things. I mean, I have here, that looks like a mobile phone. Actually, this is an app which I have subsequently developed and I want to make available to people free, which gives you pulsed electromagnetism all the time. OK, I was going to ask you about that because you were criticised for two things around the issue of cancer. One was this the gadget, uh, a yoga the mat or the the empad, the, the, yeah. empad, the yeah. ec electromagnetic pad, uh, which you suggested could help tackle cancer. Tackle be being the relevant word that you used. And secondly, you were criticised because you tweeted to a cancer survivor, who'd tweeted you, by saying you were talking quackery and it should be made illegal. You tweeted back, scientific fact: disease is caused by negative energy. And then you asked this this Twitter user, is it possible your ill health is caused by your negative attitude? Do you regret that, saying that to him? No, not at all. I Why regret not? the fact that he didn't answer the question. Why would you suggest that to someone, though? Because it is a scientific fact that negative energy causes disease and negative thoughts are part of that energy process. If you are faced with a serious illness, you have to come at it with mm. a positive mental attitude. It changes the outcome, and millions of doctors and millions of scientists will tell you that. I, I have an but expression... But don't you think it's a horrible thing to say to a cancer survivor? Well, I think it was horrible uh, the way he started the dialogue. And no, the, but I'm asking you about what you said The to only him. concession I will make is, I stopped doing Twitter because I realised you cannot have a balanced debate but I'm through you, Twitter. Is it? Do you not think it was horrible what you said to him? No, because I asked him a question. It's a perfectly reasonable question to ask somebody, do you think that your negative attitude has possibly contributed to the situation you find yourself in? Mm. Do you not think it would upset that person? Possibly. Does that not bother you? Well, that chapter has, has gone. Mm. I'm, I'm very, very relaxed with the principle that if you want to tackle big problems in your life and serious disease, you have to come at it in a positive way. And you, there's a whole range of things that you can do before you subject yourself to big pharma and chemicals mm. in your body, etc. Do you think all cancers can be caused by negative attitudes? No. Which ones? I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Exactly. Sorry, the point you're making is? 
I don't, I don't quite understand the link that you're making. You're suggesting to one cancer survivor that his cancer was caused by his no, negative No, I asked attitude. a question. Is that not the same as... I wasn't doing a diagnosis, Victoria. Mm -hmm. I asked mm -hmm. the question, is it possible that... And you could come at it the other way and say that somebody mm -hmm. should actually think to themselves, oh, actually, that's quite a good point. Am I in this situation because I've created a negative energy about my being? Mm -hmm. And that could actually be construed as a very positive thing. And, you, and, and obviously you know that there are really positive people who get serious diseases who don't make it. Correct. Yeah, my father being one. Yeah. So it's not just about the positive attitude. This is not binary. What I do think is that we need to explore a lot more about the energy of the human body and we need to understand. It's back to my FKO. Find out the facts, then you gain the knowledge and then you're qualified to have an opinion. Okay. Let me read some messages for you. Uh... Everyone is behind you, says Christopher, in your battle, in your legal battle. I hope you manage to succeed in getting your money back and fight for the little guy. Good luck. Uh, Mohammed says, watching Noel Edmonds on your programme, and I must admit, such a good interview. I went through the same thing. I'm very happy he's getting justice for what he's lost. I hope more get justice too. Karen says, go for it, Noel. I'm, I'm sure hundreds of others are behind you, and I hope you beat the big conglomerates. Chris, 60 million is just greed. Noel doesn't need this money. He's taking advantage. Do you want to respond to that? Well, it's uh, back to facts and knowledge opinion. Um, I had my businesses stolen from me. I've never talked about compensation. Mm. I am asking Lloyds Banking Group to give back what was stolen. And what they proposed was basically they'd nick my car and they can give me the wheels back. Um, <laughs> I, I, there's another thought about that, but I'll be polite. Okay. Hazel, Hazel on Facebook uh, says to me, I think you were very rude to ask him how much he is worth. Uh, Tracy says... Um, <laughs> what? Are we no. talking about that in the current BBC climate? For goodness sake, you, you've got to ask the question, even if I don't regard it as being <laughs> worthy of an answer. Tracy says, uh, these banks, especially Lloyds, have destroyed people for way too long. Do you miss being on television? I thought we were on telly. Oh well, God! You know, you know, weekly show. No, radio I don't. Show. No, I don't. Um, I have had just the most wonderful, wonderful career. Mm. Uh, it reaches a 50-year milestone in September. That's when I first started in radio. I'm in a building uh, which I respect and appreciate, and I uh, every opportunity, because there has been misrepresentation. I thank the BBC for 30 fantastic years of wonderful opportunity. I decided of my own volition to concentrate on my businesses, which were then destroyed by HBOS, Lloyd's, and um, I was saved by Channel 4 asking me to do Deal or No Deal. I did it for 10 years, nearly 3,000 shows, and because of the tabloid world we live in, it was axed, but believe me, 10 years of opening red boxes is enough. Mm. Um, I'm happy to retire. But if someone approached you with a new format that you liked, exactly. you'd do it, wouldn't you? If somebody came to me and said, look, here's something different, that's the key thing. Mm. I was so fortunate to be given wonderful formats. So let's just remember, the boy from Milford ain't that great. You know, I wasn't in the Ronnie's class, the Bruce class, the Doddy class. I was given great formats and wonderful teams to work with. And if somebody came along and said, look, we've got a great format here, I'd look at it. Mm. Uh, but I don't miss it. OK. I'm not sure I believe you. But anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for coming on the programme. Would thank I you. lie to you? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much anyway. Victoria, thank you. Thank you.